Hey everyone, I'm Bo Blaze. And I'm Chris Park, and welcome to Comedians Talk to NFT Stars. Today's episode is sponsored by Riverside, where you can easily record podcasts and videos in beautiful 4K right from your browser or mobile app. At Blazo, we made the switch to Riverside, and for podcasts, it blows Zoom away. They record locally and upload continuously, so slow connections won't affect you at all. You can even get started for free. Check them out and support us by going to blazo.art slash riverside. That's blazo.art slash riverside. It blows Zoom away. Did you know you can get the full video version of this and all our podcasts absolutely free as an NFT? Go to blazo.art slash links. Blazo.art slash links. But you'll have to hurry because this is an open edition NFT that's only available for one week. After that, you can still get one on the secondary market. Today we talk to Adam Garamani of the Untamed Elephant. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our very first episode of Comedians Talk to NFT Star. We decided that our very first interview should be with one of the first projects from back in that summer of 21. Brian Adams? Yeah, something like that. Uh If you ask around, you'll find that it was actually a lot of people's first mint, including myself. The project is known as the first ever mission-driven NFT. They have amazingly raised and delivered $75,000 to Asian and African elephant charities, and you probably have already figured out that the project is, of course, the Untamed Elephants. Everyone help me welcome our good friend and head elephant wrangler, Adam Garamani. All right. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. to Comedians Talk to NFT Stars. Oh, thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is your first episode. This is your Genesis episode. And everyone knows the Genesis is the most valuable. So That's right. Great honor. Hopefully one day people will be looking at this NFT and going, i got to get a Garamani. You got, <laughs> do you have a Garamani? I have two Garamani. Oh, you must be rich. Folks, I'm Bo Blaze. Say hello to my co-host, Chris Park, everybody. Chris hello. Park. Yay! Hello out there. We have a great show for you today, Adam and the Untamed Elephants. Also, we have our infamous comedy questions and a new game, which is kind of a guess the NFT project kind of game. Mutant Ape Yacht Club. What? Mutant Ape Yacht Club. Chris, we're not even playing. Vengeful War Babies. Vengeful War Babies? It's actually called War Nymph, which depicts babies with swords guarding Mars, and they have, like, wings on them. It was a nifty gateway project that sold out in 20 minutes and made $5.8 million. You know, I I just don't even know what to think about you sometimes. Fun fact, the collection is by Canadian artist Claire Elise Boucher, better known as Grimes. Is that Bobby Boucher's sister? Uh, Which you probably know is Elon Musk's former girlfriend. Baby Mama and Mutant Cyborg. That's very nice. Are you done now? Um, yeah. Great. No, it's called NFT Jeopardy! Oh, okay. Adam, you're so patient. Let's talk elephants. (laughs) Adam, your project is amazing. What a history. Tell us about that. So one great thing about the NFT world in general is that projects have probably donated like a billion plus dollars at this point. I mean, it's insane. Uh, Untamed Elephants was the first ever charity-driven project. So we have heard that a lot of projects said that they were inspired by us. So that's a great honor. We keep innovating in Web3. You know, when you're in the first for a charity, you become the first to do other things as well. We did the longest ever NFT trip. Uh, We did a two-week trip to Sri Lanka with our holders, a great experience. We did it with our our non-profit partners, Saving Ganesh. And uh, the cool thing uh, about us, too, is that we're an OG project. 99% of OG projects no longer exist, but we've been plugging away. So 
uh, I think that, yeah, we've earned a place in, in people's portfolios. Yeah, absolutely. I know it was my first mint, I remember. But anyway, you go into detail on your website about the elephants and their impact on the environment. So why don't you tell us a little about that? Yeah, it was super eye-opening. A lot of people ask, why elephants of all animals? I get that question a lot. I mean, there's a few things about them that interacting with them kind of opens your eyes. Like one, elephant intelligence is ridiculous. Like when you think of the smartest animals in the world, everyone says, oh, uh, apes and, and maybe dolphins. But elephants are equal intelligence, except they're so different. I mean, apes are kind of similar to humans in a lot of ways, but elephants are the biggest animals uh, on land. They have these giant trunks. It's almost like the closest thing to an intelligent alien species. They're so, like, magnificent, and they can look at you playfully, they can look at you suspiciously. The more you interact with them, the more interesting they become. They're so big that they need massive amounts of land and food to survive, and they always are bumping up against human farms and settlements and causing conflict there. So that's a big issue with them. Then there's the poaching issue. An even bigger issue is captivity. I mean, a lot of elephants are being used for tourism and manual labor, and even uh, for religious ceremonies. The worst treated elephants are those in Buddhist temples. So Buddhism, which is such a beautiful religion, has this one blind spot where they just massively abuse elephants. You have these marvelously intelligent, interesting animals, and they have more problems than almost any other animal. So that's why elephants are really important to to help out. Yeah, I, I've heard crazy stuff. Like, they actually, like, mourn their dead. And... They'll mourn their dead. They have long memories. You know, elephants never forget. <laughs> they play with each other, and they play with other animals. Like, there's funny YouTube clips of an elephant and a rhino. And rhinos are notoriously dumb. So this elephant is just, like, walking around. He picks up a stick, and he puts the stick on his nose to kind of make fun of the rhino. <laughs> <laughs> Really? So, yeah, so you're dealing with this, like an otherworldly intelligence. <laughs> they probably are funnier than a lot of the comedians we know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, Adam, I'm not trying to be a dick or anything. Then don't. Well, no, I'm sorry. I respect what you guys do totally, but really, what does an elephant do with $75,000? Am I right? I mean, they have terrible memories. Do they even remember that you gave them the money? And also, do they even know what money is? They probably ate it, which is a waste, you know, as far as I'm concerned. That's not what it was for. All I can imagine are big dumps with, like, little Ben Franklin faces sticking out of them. You know what I mean? Little Ben Franklin. Little Ben Franklins, yes. He's on the 100, right? That's who that is? Yeah, guy. I yeah. need Ben Franklin's in the poop. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, Adam, please explain to us all the good that was done with the money. Well, if you give an elephant a lot of money, I mean, they can use it to fan themselves. They can, <laughs> they can toss it on their backs. They toss sand on their backs to protect from the sun or from, from insects. So, yeah, there could be some good uses that elephants can have for it. Of the 75 grand, we gave about 50 grand to save the elephants, and they used that money to bust one of the biggest poachers in the world. Wow. Oh, wow. And Saving Ganesh, our partner for Asian elephants, works with local officials and sanctuaries and zoos to you know, improve the quality of life for captive elephants and to help make sure that elephants aren't destroying farms and then the farmers end up shooting the elephants. I don't think we have any of that here. Do we have farmers shooting elephants in the U.S.? I um. Not that I don't think if it is, it's not like a huge issue. But yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't hear about it a lot. Maybe yeah. uh, farmers shooting people the size of elephants. I mean, we're pretty fat as a. Uh, I mean, society. you know, we are. Yeah, you never know. Um, that wasn't an elephant. That was my wife. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm, okay. <laughs> if elephants were in the U.S., they'd be just raiding Costco. They wouldn't even go to farms. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Chris? I think it's time for NFT Jeopardy. Hey! We've searched the top 100 collections on OpenSea over the last 30 days. We will present you with clues to the names of these collections in the form of answers, and you must phrase your responses in the form of a question. Are you ready, Adam? Yes, just, just be aware that I have no life outside of NFTs, so I might be the Ken Jennings of this game. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Question number one. This PFP project stores images completely on-chain 
and offers nesting rewards for those who wish to stake their token. It's Moonbirds, and it's in chain now, not on chain. I have to warn you, sir. Remember, you must answer in a question. What is Moonbirds? That's right. What is Moonbirds? Here we go. Next question for Adam. These joyfully colored scribbles may have the flavor of burnt toast. What is Doodles by Burnt Toast? Yeah! All right! Now, did you understand the, the why they might smell like burnt toast? Yeah, that's the famous artist uh, behind them. You really have no life, do you? Okay. Um, <laughs> number three. These 8,888 little What is creatures. Pudgy Penguins? How, how, you didn't even let me finish. <laughs> Eight, how, did, eight, how could you possibly? 8,888 is a very specific supply. Guys, too good. You're too good. But just for the people at home, uh, these 8,888 little creatures filled with love, empathy, and compassion may have come from the South Pole. What is the Pudgy Penguins? He's right. He's right there. Right. This one's a little, uh, might be a little more esoteric. Here we go. This public domain project should come with a Surgeon General warning. What is Emphers? Motherfuckers. Hey! You're, you're too good. There he is. Uh, Did you get the, the reference? Yeah, yeah, they're all smoking. They all have their headphones. The dad is walking <laughs> exactly. in. And dad's exactly. like, are you winning, son? And they're like, no, they're never winning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the last one. Let's see if you can go five for five. These 166,464 lands might help you sell your voxels. What is sandbox? Oh, yeah, there he is. It's ridiculous. Right. I'm going to have to make these harder. Either that or I got to find people who are dumber because this was too easy. <laughs> There's three metaverses, uh, Decentraland, Other Side, and Sandbox. And NFT Worlds, four. And Web3, and, web three and <laughs> yeah, there's others. So let's talk about how you got involved in Untamed Elephants. Uh, many people may not know that you are not the first owner of the elephants. Uh, you might be better described as the savior of the elephants. It's sort of like the Jesus of the elephants. Uh Sure. The Elephant's New Testament, some would say. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Dumbo. Yes, uh -huh. exactly. Uh -huh. Anyway, it's actually a bit of a sordid tale, folks. It started back in July of 21. At that time, the project was owned by a guy on Twitter named Lurking is Toxic. And I'm not doxing him because he still promotes that he started the project on Twitter. But he was definitely not delivering on his promises. The FUD started, which which stands for fear, uncertainty, and... Douchebaggery. No, doubt. Eh, same difference. Anyway, the floor dropped, things got ugly, and he said he was willing to sell it. And then, QR Hero. Dun, 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 dun. Enter Adam, everybody. It was a rug pool. Uh, I think... I think it was only online for like a month before he rug pulled it. I had been working on another NFT project called Hello Fam, which was the first NFT wine brand. When drama about Untamed Elephant Crew had started spreading on Twitter, I kind of poked into the Discord as just with my popcorn to see what was going on. <laughs> and the community was going crazy and he was banning people left and right. Then I started to see these like toxic influencer people. And they were starting to throw offers out to buy the community. I knew at that point, I'm like, this is a great community. This is a great project that has the potential to do a lot of good for elephants. I didn't want to see those people buy it. Buy it. And I knew they had infinite money, too, much more than I did. I just kind of acted on instinct and contacted him. And before I knew it, I had the keys, unbanned everyone, took the best uh, leaders of the community elevated them to be part of the team people like viking dad and josh and kaiser we changed the the logo we changed the branding very similar to what happened with pudgy penguins and we've actually seen a few other projects kind of 
follow the same pattern where the community kicks out their toxic uh, first people, take over, a new leadership comes in and helps realize the potential. We were the second project to ever do that. Uh, the first was Fame Lady Squad. I remember Fame Lady Squad, but that then had a happy ending, right? Yeah, yeah. it was an all-women collection, and it was all made by Russian dudes. Yes, exactly. In their case, it was a lot easier. The Russian dudes just said, okay, we're, we're sorry, just take everything, no charge, and we'll do whatever we can to help you out. Yeah. In our case, it was giving some dude a lot of money and, and him trying to steal from us like constantly afterward and causing problems. I, I would have much rather had the Fame Lady Squad uh, situation. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Well, I could say as a community member since the Mint that you're a huge breath of fresh air, and obviously uh, to us all that you really cared about the community and the elephants. The community is very lucky, you know, that you did take over. You followed through on some of the promised campaign drops and things like that. You even created another one called the Matriarchs, which uh, are the series of female elephant NFTs. You know, what's crazy is that all this happened literally between like July and what, September? Untamed Elephant Crew, the original, had only been around for like two months or something before before we took it over. And then in December, you got a real boost uh, when Roy from Zen Academy, who's very popular, uh, tweeted a really supportive thread. Uh, he had found out some unsavory things. How did that help the elephants? Yeah, it was wonderful. So a lot of the NFT world is driven by influencers. And I'd say that 90% of NFT influencers are people that I wouldn't want to owe a favor to. Like, there are some of the worst people on Earth. <laughs> but uh, Zen is one of the best ones. That tweet thread took us by surprise, and it came right at the end of the year. It helped us sell out Eighth Wonders, the collection that we published with the artist Eighth Project. Brought a lot of excitement and activity uh, to the community. And, yeah, we're always grateful for it. A fun fact is that I paid 17 ETH, to take over Untamed Elephants. A lot of people said that was crazy. Back then, that was a lot of money. <laughs> but after we published Eighth Wonders and that sold out, I got paid back everything. So it, it ended up working out. It's really great that this has a, a nice... I wouldn't want to say ending, because it's not ending, but uh, a nice recovery story. Um, I remember posting things like, there is no way this community can fail. There's no way. It's one of the strongest ones in the space. And it was back then. It was one of the first real big communities. And you guys started Stampede Sundays uh, in your Discord. And that was a pretty big thing back in the day. That was kind of a first thing, right? Yeah, every Sunday we do a fun giveaway or we make announcements. Um, this way people don't have to check in on us every day. They can just check in on us on Sunday and see if anything is going on. But that was, I don't know if you're the first project, but I remember back then it being like, what the heck's going on? I mean, it was like <laughs> so many posts, Stampede Sunday, Stampede Sunday, show off your show off your elephant. It was huge. Yeah, I miss, I miss those crazy bull market days. I mean, now that we're in the bear market, we still try to keep the, the, the yeah. torch like going. Adam, you should talk a little bit about your Discord. Every project these days has a Discord to kind of keep keep everyone informed and keep people engaged. Ours is, is actually owned by Viking Dad. I said, well, people don't feel comfortable with one owner holding the keys to everything. So to build trust, I transferred ownership of the Discord to the most trusted community member, Viking Dad. And we had a vote. The vote was instant and like a hundred percent said yes i remember yeah probably voted on that myself <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot of projects are now doing most of their activity on twitter groups so we created the fant 50 uh, twitter group and it's for 50 of our og members we call it the elephant advisory board as well yes i'm very disappointed that i'm not in the 50 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you, you should be. You should be. I mean, don't don't jinx it. I'll add you, and then, <laughs> and then you'll want to leave GMs every morning. An original mentor, I am. You know, I was checking out the Discord, and I can't believe you let Bo do like a fitness thing there. It was weird. What? 
I mean, really, Bo is the last person I would ever think was teaching fitness. Unless you had some sort of class that teaches people to be the size of an elephant Dude. or something. What? what? You... Adam, back me up here. Is there not a thing on your Discord called Fant Fit? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, Fant Fant Fit. And is the guy running it not named Bo B? Yeah, Bo B. The guy's name is Bo Bobanko. It's not Bo Blaze. Oh, well, close enough. I thought that was just like your fitness name or something. Yeah. Well, actually, we do have an opening um, because he hasn't made a video in a while. We'd, <laughs> we'd love to nominate you to continue. Maybe people won't notice it's still Bo, Dr. Bo B. Hi. I'm Bo B, and as you can see, I've let myself go. <laughs> I am now very fat, and uh, <laughs> I was hoping to start this up again, and maybe I could lose some weight. Ah, uh, man, what are the odds, huh? Adam, one of your biggest fan fans is actually a rock star legend. Yeah, world famous, greatest of all time, Peter Frampton is a big fan of ours and our elephant work. For almost a year, he had his Twitter avatar as an untamed elephant. Well, we are all in for a very special treat, Adam. I got to admit, I have no idea how Chris pulled this off. A lot of hard work, Bo. A lot of hard work. Well, you know what, Chris? I'm actually... I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. um, usually you're so fucking lazy. You're always cutting corners and be so harsh. Waiting for the last minute. But uh, yeah, on our first show, no less. Yes, sir. I work tirelessly to make this happen, man. Well, folks, believe it or not, we, uh, we have Peter Frampton on the phone. And um, let me just get him up here. Mr. Frampton, how are you doing today? And welcome to Comedian. Hello. Right. This is Peter Frampton. Jesus Christ. That's right, Grammy Award winning, eight times platinum, talk box singing Peter Frampton. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chris, whoa, whoa, Chris, whoa, whoa, we all know whoa, whoa, whoa. this is you. Not sure what you mean, Governor. Governor is Australian. By the way, where is that Chris guy? He said he'd leave 50 quid under the mat outside so he could, I, I mean, oh, I could pick it up later. I, I bet he did, yeah. I'll tell you, that Chris sure is hilarious. You should give that bloke a rise. I mean, I'm only little old world famous rock star Peter Frampton, not that Chris Park comedian fella. Uh-huh. Well, you know what, Mr. Frampton? Yes? What exactly are the Untamed Elephants? Oh, well, that was the name of me band after working with Bowie back in the 80s. No, it is not the name of your... Wah, 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 wah. They're a charity-driven and... Okay, Adam, I'm really sorry. This is clearly not Peter Frampton. You can't prove that. I can't believe I said I was proud of you. I wonder how Bo's feeling. Not very well. Is there ringing in his ears? Yes, I'm, in, I'm embarrassed. That's Something to right. relate to. Okay. With me. <laughs> you know, you mentioned before about your wine. You're a wine guy. Our project, Hello Fam, is also in the Untamed Universe. It was the first NFT wine. We released NFTs backed by physical wine that we produce. The claiming process is open, so you can actually redeem your NFT and get a case of wine shipped to you. Uh, and instead of six bottles as a promotion, we're giving eight bottles. Wait, Bo, did you say that Adam's a wino? No, I was trying to tell people he has an elephant wine called Pink Elephant Parade. Oh. Well, and they use elephants instead of grapes? Is that... Did someone freaking drop you on your head, Chris, when you were young? Uh, maybe. Okay, uh, anyway... Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. So, Adam, you've been around a while, uh, long before the uh, elephants. You're the owner of the otaku.com, which is an anime site, and the icv2.com geek culture site. Tell us about those sites and, you know, what you were doing and are doing, you know, before or uh, Untamed Elephants. Yeah, so I'm one of these guys who's been self-employed and had a million jobs since I was like 15 years old. I started a big gaming website that got taken over by IGN, a big gaming portal, when I was pretty young. An anime site, which at its height had a million members. Wow. Won a ton of awards. I would speak at anime conventions, the full crowds. Made a video game called Nimble Strong Bartender and Training on iPhone and Android. That got a lot of awards. That's a cool game because it actually teaches you a skill, which is how to make cocktails. So, 
I also became a partner in ICV2, which is kind of like the the Bloomberg of tabletop gaming, co- collectible card gaming, comic books. I'm not slandering you by saying geek culture, right? That's what they call themselves. Yeah, the business of geek culture. I just want to make sure I didn't just go, ah, oh, it's a bunch of geeks and write it down. Yeah, in the industry, it's super influential and well-known. The CEO of Marvel reads it, and uh, NFTs are the logical next step because you have the collectibles element to it, with like ICV2, you have the anime element to it, you have the art element to it, you have the gaming element. I always thought that the PFP projects really do like lend themselves to being like uh, collecting baseball cards, you know, because it's almost the same motivation. You would get the cards, but you would also buy them sometimes in hope they would be worth something one day. I worked in crypto since 2013, consulted for 20 different crypto startups. And a lot of the use cases since then that are talked about a lot at conferences and by professionals are stuff that never took off because you needed that art and media component to it and collectability component to it, which crypto never really had. But with NFTs, suddenly all the use cases people were talking about for you know almost a decade now are viable and, uh, and popular. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Okay, you can learn a lot about someone by finding out what makes them laugh. So here are a few of our comedy questions so everyone can get to know you a little better. So... Who is your favorite comedian or comedians? I live in New York City, so for live comedy, I go to this place called uh, The Stand. Uh, The other day I was there, and they had a performer named uh, Shane Gillis. And so I became obsessed with his YouTube shows. And yeah, so he's my current uh, favorite comedian. Shane's one of the best, yeah. Adam, what are some of your favorite comedy movies, TV programs? I grew up as a kid watching Spaceballs hundreds and hundreds of times. And (laughs) I actually had never seen Star Wars, so I had no conception that Spaceballs was a parody of something else. I thought it was just a funny movie in its own universe. Uh, Really? So later on in (laughs) middle school, I went to a friend's house and he's like, Adam, let me show you Star Wars. And my mind was just blown. I was like, what? It finally connected the dots of some of the jokes in Spaceballs. These guys copied Spaceballs. (laughs) Uh, You must have been disappointed on how much smaller the helmet was. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot I prefer from Spaceballs. All right, so then what is the line? What is the line you had to do all the time from Spaceballs? You know, ludicrous speed is a good one. But another good one is he asks uh, Rick Moranis' character, Say, are you my father? And- I am your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. That that's another great <laughs> line. What does that make us? Absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. You got it. Yep. <laughs> all right. Finally, we like to end all our comedians' talk shows with the following. Adam, tell us a joke. So I, I want to tell a joke uh, related to elephants. Of course. Why do elephants paint their testicles red? Uh, I don't know, Adam. Why, why do elephants paint their testicles red? Well, so they can hide in cherry trees. Ah, all right. There you go. There's a follow-up. Oh, sorry. So now that we've established that, what's the loudest sound in the jungle? I don't know. It's a giraffe eating cherries. <laughs> Very good. Folks, Adam Garamani, hey! everybody. Thank you, Adam, for putting up with us. And uh, you can find the Untamed Elephants at untamedelephants.com. I.O. It's schnazzy, you know, because those I.O. domains are expensive. On Twitter, Adam is at Adam A.G.B. What does that stand for, Adam? My first uh, business that I ever started was a website. I was 16 at the time. It was called Absolute Game Boy. So my handle on there was Adam Absolute Game Boy, A-G-B. So it just has has kept for over 20 years now. Boy, you see what you learn on Comedians Talk to NFT Stars? (laughs) That is a nugget, folks. I bet no one's asked you that before. 
No, never. All right, anything else you'd like to plug, sir? Great being your Genesis guest host. If you mint this episode as an NFT, I think it'll be really valuable one day. It's right now is the perfect time to be creating content in the NFT world. Even the biggest NFT podcasts on like YouTube only get like a thousand views. So you could be number one like easily. And you guys are the perfect people to do it. And I'm really... Yeah, grateful to, to be here and and had fun. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, we actually have a, an interesting way to release everything. We release clips on YouTube and TikTok. We do audio versions here on Twitter and as a podcast. But the only way you can get the full edited video version is as an NFT. And what we're doing is... It's going to be free. Uh, if you want to find us, we are at Blazo Art, and all our links are at blazo.art slash links. Please follow us so you'll know when we drop this show. Adam, thank you so much for being with us. You're one of my favorite people in the NFT world, so who else would be our first guest? And I'm really, really happy that you were able to make it. Thank you both. Thank you, Chris. And thank Peter Frampton uh, for me as well. I'll definitely to... let him know. Don't, don't get him started, please. <laughs> it's, he embar- you're embarrassing. That's why. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Riverside, where you can easily record podcasts and videos in beautiful 4K right from your browser or mobile app. Check out Riverside and support us at the same time. Visit our special link, blazo.art slash Riverside. You know, in the past, we used to use Zoom, but that's really meeting software, right, Chris? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Sorry, I was yawning. (laughs) Here at Blazo, we made the switch to Riverside. And for podcasts, it blows Zoom away. There's a reason why I give you the blow comment. I, I figured as yeah. much. Yeah. You know, the secret is everything is recorded locally and uploaded continuously. So, like, if you have a bad connection or your computer even crashes, it doesn't affect you at all. Oh, wow. Well, let's say hypothetically somebody breaks into my house, smashes up my computer in the middle of a Riverside podcast interview. I'll still have all my footage? Um, not if you hadn't done it yet. Oh. No, No, what I'm saying... (laughs) All right, so... (laughs) What I'm saying is when you use Zoom, you are going straight up to the cloud and recording. That means that if you have a slow connection or you get dropouts, which people do all the time, it's going to be on the final product. But... But for Riverside, it is not on the final product because it's recording locally on your computer and then slowly uploading it to the cloud. There's one extra step, meaning there's never any dropout due to the internet. Oh, wow. That sounds so handy and delightful. It's handy and dandy, Chris. Oh, dandy handy. You know, there's a reason why you'll see people like Tim Ferriss, Gary V, Michelle Obama, Tim Cook, and many more using Riverside. How about you, Chris? Do you know any famous people who use Riverside? Uh, no. (laughs) I don't know any famous people bragging about their uh, podcast. I do. Tim Ferriss, Gary V. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you know what, Chris? If you want to start a podcast on your own, go rogue. Okay. You can even get started for free. Oh my God, really? Zero dollars. <laughs> wow. If you want to check out Riverside and help support us at the same time, visit our special link. That means we get money, right? Yes, Chris, but uh, that's why we said that uh, it supports us as well. Oh, uh, okay. This is how simple life can be. If you like our podcast, or anything that we do. If you like the way Chris's face looks, you may need at some point software to do your art podcast. And all you have to do is click on our link at blazo.art slash riverside. That's blazo.art slash riverside. If you want to find us, we are at Blazo Art. And all our links are at blazo.art slash links. Please follow us so you'll know when we drop this show. 